So now we're going to go into the approach section. First, we're going to start with the posterior approach, the more approach, southern approach. It goes by a variety of different names. And the first question is, where is the origin of the muscle located between the anterior acetabulum and the iliac vessels? So this is actually a two-part question. The first is to actually define what muscle that is. And then second is to determine what the origin of that. So in fact, we're talking about the iliopsoas. And the origin of the iliopsoas is, in fact, off of the lumbar transverse processes. And the majority of uh, examinees got this question correctly. So as you'll see as we go along, many of the things that are highlighted are um, the questions or queries that we've seen on prior exams. And I think it's important just to keep this in mind. I think um, <clears throat> the PowerPoint presentation is an excellent summary. And when we get to the uh, approaches to the acetabulum, a nice uh, table has been constructed that really gets to the salient points. To go over again, the posterior approach provides excellent exposure to the acetabulum and the proximal femur with the indications for both total hip, hemi, as well as INDs for septic hips. The uh, coker langenbach uh, extensile uh, variation of this is tended to be used for more complicated or extensive acetabular work. It's the same interval as the posterior approach to the hip. Incision is slightly more anterior over the greater trochanter. There's no real true internervous plane. The intramuscular plane is between the, the uh, G-max, which is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. The muscle is split following the rafe of the musculature. The vascular plane, the superior gluteal artery, supplying the proximal third of the muscle with the inferior gluteal, inferior gluteal artery, excuse me, supplying um, vascular supply to the distal two-thirds of the muscle. Patients are typically positioned in the lateral decubitus position. Um, again, very uh, useful indications for total hip arthroplasty, posterior wall, and lip fractures. The advantage allows for femoral head dislocation and allowing the buttock soft tissue to fall away from the field. I have very little experience doing this in the prone position. These indications do, in fact, include transverse fractures of the acetabulum. Superficial approach, incision, make it as long as it needs to be, but typically approximately 10 to 15 centimeters curved. Um, the mini approach, uh, which has been advocated by some, can be done for the most part relatively safely, however, has shown no long-term benefits in terms of hip function. Superficial dissection incise the fascia lata and uncover the vastus laterally, uh, vastus lateralis distally. And again, splitting the fibers of the G-max, the proximal incision, be cognizant of the small bleeders. Question. The 57-year-old female with degenerative hip arthritis has questions regarding the mini incision total hip compared with a traditional total hip. Which of the following statements is true? A reduced rate of dislocation, increased range of motion, no difference in function, less chance of complications, and a less chance of limping. And a lot of work has been done to this to kind of dispel the notion that smaller incisions result in either improved early recovery or improved long-term function. So um, I am a big proponent of make the incision as long as it, be, it has to be to do the operation in the most expedient and safe manner. The deep approach, internally rotate the hip to place the short external rotators on stretch. I tend to extend the hip. Flexion actually uh, provides less exposure by extending the hip at this point. It allows me to get uh, good access. I put uh, suture ligatures after I incise the rotators at their uh, insertion to the posterior aspect of the trochanter. Evidence has shown from our institution decreased dislocation rates when we extended an extensive short external rotator repair in addition to repairing the posterior capsule is performed. Incise the capsule and again dislocate the hip after performing the capsulotomy. Dangerous sciatic nerve initially located along the posterior surface of the quadratus. It is in fact fairly posterior 
and I would <clears throat> largely suggest you avoid being too far posterior when performing the southern approach to the hip. There's absolutely no reason to be there, and you can obviously run into issues with both the sciatic nerve as well as some of the vasculature that's posterior. Um, sciatic nerve injury prognosis, the recovery of the tibial division is good, despite some uh, initial severe uh, neurologic compromise. The recovery of the perineal division is more dependent upon the severity. The worst prognosis is for a combination of both motor and sensory, and then the worst complication is when this is in conjunction with causalgia or reflex dystrophy. <clears throat> Vascular, again, dangers, the superior gluteal, gluteal artery and nerve leads the pelvis through the greater sciatic notch, which is a common question. The contents of the notch include the gluteal nerve and the gluteal artery and vein. It runs over the piriformis between the medius and the minimus and enters the deep surface of the gluteus medius. <clears throat> As we'll see when we get to the direct lateral approaches, do not split the medius more than five centimeters proximal to the trochanter due to the risk of denervation of the nerve. Uh, inferior gluteal artery, um, less common, leaves the pelvis below the level of the piriformis, make, uh, if inadvertently cut, retract. Um, if that happens, one approach, as indicated here, would be to consider flipping the patient, opening the abdomen, and tying off the interior iliac artery. Uh, that is beyond my pay grade, and I would certainly ask for rapid help. In addition, the first perforating branch of the profunda femoris, and this is in close proximity to the femoral insertion of the gluteus maximus. So be careful when releasing this, because you can get these perforating branches that can be annoying and bleed, but oftentimes can be isolated and ligated. The femoral vessels are most at risk with the placement of retractors anterior to the psoas muscle. So that is, in fact, your landmark. So be cognizant of this, and be careful about placing retractors anteriorly. Um, dangers, quadratus femoris, excessive uh, traction apply to the femoral head and neck. And finally, if you do get into a lot of excessive bleeding, in probably any approach, but certainly this can occur with the posterior approach, you do run the risk of the development of heterotopic ossification, as you can see in this extensive grade four Brooker classification on the radiograph on the right. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.